A few years ago, a scientific group from Oxford Brookes University calculated that at least 16,000 people suffered from Nazi and human experiments. Certainly, horrible medical tests like that were impossible in the U.S., anywhere apart from one field. The modern ethics code for psychologists appeared only in the 90s. Before that, scientists had successfully performed dozens of unethical psychological tests on people, and not only. Moreover, no one knows the exact number of victims. Which of these experiments are the creepiest? The ones where the test subjects were forced to beat each other may be the ones where psychologists tortured helpless animals in the name of love, or when they manipulated the psyches of children. It's a creepy scale of 1 to 10. We'll consider the content of the experiment, the harm done to the participants, and the benefits to science. All right, do you agree to our experiment? What was the creepiest psychological experiment that was beneficial to science? A psychologist sat you down at a table with a current switch attached to it. When another test subject sitting behind a wall answers a question incorrectly, you must shoot 15 volts through their body. But with every new mistake, the psychologist increases the voltage by another 15 volts, and your partner keeps answering wrong. When the figures show 105 volts, you check with the psychologist whether you should proceed. They insist, so you obey. The person behind the wall groans in pain. When the voltage reaches 300, your partner screams that their heart hurts and falls silent. But the psychologist orders you to go on. You come to your senses only when it's already 450 volts. You've just electrocuted your partner to death. In the 60s, Stanley Milgram from Yale carried out 18 experiments of this kind. That way, the scholar concluded that most of us obey even criminal commands if they're given by an authority. That's why regular Germans worked in death camps and helped carry out inhuman experiments. In Milgram's investigation, the person sitting behind the wall was an actor and didn't actually get electrocuted. But the test subjects in charge of the current switch didn't know that. Some of them had a nervous breakdown, but still continued to follow the orders of the psychologist. Milgram's experiments revealed some truly abominable sides of human nature without doing any serious harm to the test subjects. However, the benefits of studying the powerful effects of authority proved to be considerable. But what creepy psychological experiment caused significant harm, and its usefulness was dubious? This time, your partner isn't an actor, but a regular guy just like you. It's just that the psychologist chooses you to be a prisoner, while this guy acts as a guard. On the very first day of the experiment, the guard starts insulting you. Then he beats you up, because he's the boss here. The next day, you and other inmates gain your courage and decide to stand up to this repression. But the guards violently repress the riot and make you clean the toilets with your bare hands as punishment. All mattresses are taken away from the cells. You have to sleep on the floor. You feel terrified and hopelessly apathetic. But the psychologist doesn't let you go, even when you're stressed so much that a rash erupts all over your body. This hell goes on for six days. And now you probably need your own psychologist. That was the Stanford Prison Experiment led by Philip Zimbardo. Thus, the psychologist convinced many people that regular people quickly become sadistic if given too much power over others. However, the records disclosed several years ago indicate that Zimbardo ordered the guards to torment inmates. So why on earth did they have to experience that horror? It seems that Zimbardo never tried to find the truth in his terrible study, but instead wanted to get the result that he wanted, despite causing substantial harm to the test subjects. But what experiment could be even worse? At least the participants in Milgram's and Zimbardo's experiments gave their consent to participate. And what horrible things did psychologists do in the name of science against the will of their test subjects? The most helpless subjects of research are animals. Imagine you're a rhesus monkey that just came into the world. You're immediately thrown into a cage with cold wire construction and a milk bottle. There's food, but nobody to soothe and caress you. You fall asleep, trembling with fear. 
The next day, the wire mother turns into a soft dummy. You can snuggle up to it. That's comforting. And then suddenly, spikes come out of your new soft mother, and it blows you away with a powerful airflow. You recoil from it, totally confused. Try to nestle back to it, but the cruel mom pushes you away again and again. One week later, you sit in the corner of the cage, rocking from side to side, unable to understand the reason for this cruelty. You you just tried your best to get a shred of love. That's how a leading American psychologist, Harry Harlow, tormented infant rhesus monkeys. He proved that to develop appropriately, babies need to be not only fed, but also cuddled. The monkeys, deprived of a mother's affection, went mad and later even killed their own offspring. As Harlow's colleagues claimed, he enjoyed watching the animals suffering. However, you don't always need to make someone suffer to perform a genuinely bizarre experiment. On the contrary, John Calhoun, an animal behavior researcher, created a true mice heaven which he called Universe 25. That was a shelter where the rodents had unlimited access to food and water and could freely breed. But only two years later, it turned out that the population of more than 2,000 mice was on the brink of extinction. Since they weren't exposed to predators, the animals started attacking, sometimes even killing and eating each other. Some of them became outcasts and wasted away while others ate non-stop and barely moved. It looked like the rodents saw no reason to breed. Watching this, Calhoun concluded that living beings need specific stress-inducing motivators from the outside world to survive. Well, and that overpopulation can't do any good. Harlow and Calhoun performed some truly awful experiments on helpless animals. Although they weren't using people, we can still understand that those psychologists made the poor creatures endure unbearable suffering. Let's add three more points for infanticide and cannibalism. But we'll take away two points for the fact that owing to the poor monkeys and mice, we learned how to build a social life and take care of our children. After all, it would be so much worse if someone aimlessly tortured a human kid. Were there really any experiments like that too? You're 10 years old. You study in an orphanage. There's a dozen kids in the class. Half of them are stutterers. You don't have such a problem, lucky you. But suddenly, you also get scolded by teachers for speaking unclearly. What happens next? a terrible thing. You really start fumbling with words soon. Being a stutterer is such an impossible burden, your teachers say. Very shortly after, both you and the kids who were stammering from the beginning developed a habit of keeping silent all the time, just to avoid scolding. That's how Wendell Johnson, a psychologist who was a stutterer himself, decided to check if adults criticizing children's ability to speak can affect them. So he inflicted psychological trauma on many orphans just to get an obvious answer. Yes, it does. As a result, those kids were shy to speak for the rest of their lives. Johnson's experiment was called Monster Study, and many years later, the University of Iowa had to apologize to the test subjects and pay them around a million dollars in damages. Now, what else can I do but to give the highest score to the Monster Study and declare its victory? But before you feel relieved thinking that things of this kind are impossible today, Consider the following. What if some unethical experiment could be used to greatly benefit our society? You must have heard about Asperger's syndrome, thanks to Sheldon from The Big Bang Theory and Elon Musk. That was an Austrian psychiatrist, Hans Asperger, who was the first to study the symptoms of autism spectrum disorders that occur among children, but allowed to find treatment. But the doctor actively cooperated with the Nazis. There's no clear evidence that he ran his awful experiments on children, but many scientists currently suggest that we rename the syndrome. And what do you think? Should we cancel Asperger's? And is it ethical to continue making use of his discoveries? I'm looking forward to your views on the matter, and I hope I won't have to hold a contest for the creepiest comment.